Welcome to our YouTube channel and to my train room. If you were watching last week, you will have seen me make the last minute decision to take the baggage cart assembly process out of the main series and to do a separate video for it. So welcome to that separate video. As I may have mentioned elsewhere in the narrative, I've never assembled anything from this particular manufacturer before, nor have I even done a laser cut wood kit. So this is uncharted territory for me. I was thinking I might do virtually the whole process in almost real time. But then after reviewing the raw footage, I realized that it was about an hour long and most of it, the detail parts were too small to really see what I'm doing anyway. So I've just kept the informative bits and either cut out or speeded up the remainder. So without further ado, Let's turn the camera around and get busy. I have this laser cut wood kit for a baggage cart. I bought it many years ago and it's sat in a drawer full of detail parts ever since. I've never used anything from this supplier before. In fact, come to think of it, I've never assembled any laser cut wood before. So I really don't know what to expect. What I think I'm going to have to do is go away, familiarize myself with the parts and the instructions, and then I will get back to you. Well, it seems like the construction is going to be fairly straightforward, although very fiddly and probably quite time consuming. It wants me to do the rear axle assembly first. And one of the steps in the instructions is to file the axle ends round. And that I don't know how I'm going to achieve without breaking them off. Because they seem like they are going to be very fragile. And of course they're too small for me to even see what I'm doing. Let me try my magnifier light. This is something I found on walmart.com a few weeks ago and I've yet to try it out. Well, I can see quite well, although it's, it doesn't have much in the way of magnification. And I've just broken one of the axles off, I thought it might. So let's rethink this project and I will get back to you. Well, after I turned the camera off, I went to the wheel assembly. Each wheel has to be assembled from three parts. And right off the bat, I managed to break one of the rims. Although the rest of the parts did come out without uh, casualty. And I came to the conclusion that the best way of doing it was to attach them to a piece of tape. I could have used double-sided tape, but I've just folded regular scotch tape in half so that I've got a sticky surface on the top. And I'm applying a small bead of glue with a toothpick around the rim of the main wheel. And another little spot in the middle where the boss goes. And then with tweezers, I drop the rim on top, trying to line it up as best, as best I can. And then the center boss goes on the other spot of glue. So there's the four wheel assemblies done. Now I just need to leave that to go hard. And while that's setting, I'll work on other sub assemblies. Now this piece of wood here is twisted. Hopefully the deck is flat enough. Oh, it's got quite a considerable warp in it. Basically it's sagging. So I can just assume that the baggage cart has seen better days. It looks like it's a fairly old design, so maybe it's an old cart.
I made a technical error here. I'm using the cardboard that came with it as my glue pad and the picture is on the back. I'm not going to position this on the floor yet. I'll wait till I have the front axle assembly done and then I can position them where they look best. Here we have some more pieces that have to be rounded off. Actually that's an easy solution for this fifth wheel pin. I'll just open out the hole that it goes through and leave it square. It's one less opportunity to break something. And I have a plan for the broken axle end. This pin vise is another recent purchase that I've never used before. Getting started is more difficult than they showed it in the picture. And that now fits through there perfectly. So I will call that part of the process a success. Now I have the end frame to assemble. And I think that's about all I can do until the wheels are hard enough for me to handle them and clean them up a little bit. Well, I've allowed the glue to dry on all my sub-assemblies. And I think it's time now to try cleaning up the wheels. And I've got to clean up the bits around the edge, the, the, re the remnants of the, of, the, of the tabs that join it to, this, to the uh, sheet. I wasn't able to do it before because they were just too small to hold. Actually, they're cleaning up quite easily. I think this is the one I had to repair, but it really doesn't notice. Let's now put the, the end rails on the deck. Looks like the back one's leaning in. They can lean out because that's the way they'd get forced by constant use, as long as they're not leaning in. And I think once again, I'm back to waiting. I don't think I can really attach the wheels until that's hard enough to stand upside down. Although I could put the front wheels on this piece, make a sub, make a sub assembly out of it. Well, I finished assembling the baggage wagon and got it painted. I painted all the undercarriage matte black and then put a thin brown wash on the, the upper bits, which are going to be just left bare wood. I glued some small crates on it. I would have preferred regular passenger luggage, but I didn't have any. 
Anyway, if we look at it from the back, it seems very tall and narrow. And I don't really like the proportions, so I'll make sure I put it sideways on to the aisle. That will minimize that effect. I also notice that I've put the, the front wheels at a slight angle for added interest. I guess it turned out okay. Although next time I'm in the market for baggage wagons, I think I will look for a plastic kit instead. Anyway, all that remains to do now is to bring back the structure and start gluing these details to it. Well, that's all there is to it. It was quite a complicated little kit with, I think, 28 parts in a model only about an inch long. Some parts of the kit I found to be very well designed with the half lap slotted joints on all the underframe parts. Other bits, I think, left a lot to be desired, especially the rounding off of the axle ends. I just don't think there was any way that that could have been accomplished without breaking them. Surely a more sensible way to do it would have been to design the kit with larger holes in the wheel centers so that the square ends could just go straight through as they are. They're so small that I don't think anyone would ever notice that the axles were still square, uh, even under magnification. So that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it informative. Thanks for watching and bye for now.